This is the overview of the Gateway to Freedom, which is the hidden history of the Underground Railroad by Eric Foner. Um, if that name rings a bell, it's because you've probably taken a course where his, uh, the textbook was written by Eric Foner. Um, I found this book actually quite interesting as he touched on things that I didn't even know about the Underground Railroad. And maybe um, <clears throat> I would totally suggest it for other people as well as um, he makes very interesting points and um, shows some perspectives and aspects of the uh, Underground Railroad and the battle between the abolitionists and the slave owners and, uh, and, and what we had in this, in this country. Uh, his thesis and his point, he said that it, it is impossible to say how many slaves escaped to freedom in the decades of the Civil War. Contemporary sources are often of little help. For very different reasons, both abolitionists and slave owners had a vested interest in exaggerating the number. The former to emphasize the black desire for freedom and their own efforts like noble heroes for suffering and oppressed humanity the latter as evidence of a Northern conspiracy to undermine the peculiar institution. So <clears throat> he starts off in this book talking about the two different points. He's gonna give both arguments and things that happened within that time frame of both the side of the slaves or the abolitionists and the slave owners as they both have they both would sway their numbers as to how many slaves got, you know, were um, got away, you know, during a certain during, during a certain time frame, as opposed to how many slaves have been caught as well. Um, it's very political, is what he was is what he shows um, some of the moves that were made. <clears throat> now in New York, they were bound by slavery laws, which is what he speaks about. In 1840, there were laws that were mandated that there was a jury trial that would determine the fate of, of alleged fugitives. Um, a lot of this stuff happened, especially due to kidnaps, as people were being kidnapped and, uh, and sent back to their slave owners, and even free people were put into slavery at that time, as they would be, as they would be kidnapped and um, be have forced to go through the trial which was completely unfair as then you know the trial would go in the way of the slave owners and then a free man was put into slavery as he points out in um, in his book um however uh, in 1842 uh Foner says the vigilance committee's reports that kidnapping in the city gradually died as it it slowly became illegal to do that However, during this time, there were bounties that were put out. There were a lot of slave catchers out there that were, um, they were basically like bounty hunters for slaves, um, slave fugitives. They would try to get, get the reward. Um, there were newspaper advertisements on them, and those slave hunters would um, often make a living trying to find these slaves, and sometimes even capture some uh, free men to put into slavery instead. Um, <clears throat> however, on the other side of the coin, um, the abolitionists started vigilance committees such as the anti uh, the American Anti-Slavery Society or the AASS and um, he made the Tappan brothers kind of like the main characters in his story. Um, <clears throat> Arthur Tappan was the first AASS president and he also funded the Emancipator and then his brother Lewis Tappan oversaw the AASS publications and these publications would um, would help with uh, slaves and and um, and abolitionists um, coincide with each other to get these slaves up north from these um, slave states. Um, there's a lot of propaganda, pamphlets, magazines such as the Mirror of Liberty, and newspapers, of course, like the Emancipator. Um, <clears throat> but uh, he shows that he shows that there's these these two sides to the story. And um, and so uh, as as he moves forward, he starts naming all these all these characters that we've never really heard of. A lot of us heard of like Harriet Tubman and so on and so forth, and all those people, Nat Turner, etc. But um, there were people that we didn't know that he elaborates on. 
um, in his conclusion, he makes everything very uncut. He brought a lot of truth to light and he just memorialized names that may have been forgotten in that time. So I would highly suggest this book. If you are very, if you are interested into this part of history and you want something that's a little bit more raw and uncut, um, I would definitely suggest Eric Foner, um, especially this book in particular, as he really highlights what that time period was with uh, within the political spectrum and the battle between uh, slaves getting their freedom. Thank you.